which of course I wanted to discover, discuss, discuss about the destiny of the human, which is supposed to be beyond the Chinese village. I want this story can be applied, you know, say, small village in, in Spain or Latin America. You know, when you have so-called UFO arriving or some kind of foreign object, so the whole humanity panic. And it's no longer a discussion of socialism or capitalism. It's totally a discussion of our human destiny in this universe, on this small planet, which we consumed most of the planet's age. You know, we are in the, in the middle age, ending age of our Earth, the planet. And so I wanted the ending all linked to that kind of ideas. Whether you read it or not is not important. But I need to prompt these two characters, which is Udo's character and the bicycle man's character. But bicycle man is supposed to speak very old language. So we shot him, we filmed him speaking some dialogues. But in the end, we had to take out because it definitely, definitely he cannot speak. So he presents some kind of uh, Kind of mystery linked to the outside world. These photos he bring, you know, to show Kwa Kyun, this hometown photo. He said that's his hometown, but it's a photo I took from the internet. It's a moon. It's a photo of the moon. So I give to my set designer. I said, can you print that photo? And that's his hometown. Can you put it in the bicycle store? My set designer rejected. It. They said there's no hometown. It, do it doesn't look hometown. It looks like a moon. And I didn't say it is. A, it is a moon photo. From Wikipedia, but anyway, um, I hope that uh, answers your question. Yeah. I would like to add one thing because some people might wonder why this film is a German production and the film is made totally in China. I was so attracted to, to the story when I wrote the script the first time because the story actually can take place anywhere in the world. Not it's not a Chinese story. It can take place anywhere like a non-event, like this UFO, which has never been there. And everything which follows after could take place in a small German or Canadian village. So this is why this whole thing came together as a German production. Yes. Was everybody in the film actors, or were they some of the villagers? Yeah, that's the, another thing I would like to, to also talk about. Because we have, uh, you know, you see at least 400 peasants in the film, and they're from exactly the same village. They are the real peasants, farmers working on the mountain. And then we have these four pro professional actors, which is which is Udo Kier, and which is by, uh, the, the, the headmaster, and then our wonderful Chiu Chang, Chiu Chang character. She's a Shanghai professional actress. These four characters are real actors. And I, I was very clear, you know, during the casting, um, I think the production was a bit nervous, you know, like the, the so much uh, just streaking away from, for example, the Kabli fisherman. We just went to the lake, and me and my producer went to the lake, you know, looking for some old fisherman. And uh, then I saw this fisherman, totally deaf, can't hear anything, and he speaks local dialect, which is no one understand. And he's not from local, you know, he's some other village. And uh, I said, this is amazing face. So. So we said, come, can you come? And he, no, he doesn't understand nothing. So he didn't really say the line I want him to say. He just uttered some weird line. And so it's quite difficult for the other actors. They, they don't know what he's talking. So the other actors are supposed to say what I want them to say. So it's totally non-communicative. But cinema is really about you know, the, the, the manipulation of the reality. And he's very typical, the fisherman. And for example, the farmer Wong with the buffaloes. You know, we need some men have owned the buffalo, so we can use the buffalo you know, for free, you know, for smoke reduction. And then, but he's such a bad farmer, he never remembered to bring this buffalo. <laughs> and, so it was a disaster, you know, so we have a big scene with him. We have a, a story about this farmer, how he lost his buffalo, he has a buffalo, and he exchanged his buffalo for his land. But he never brings his buffalo, so we have different buffaloes, and that's different color, you know, he, he brings whatever. <laughs> So absolutely no continuity, and which is really difficult for for Shika when he talk and she talked to you know grandfather and they don't understand what she's speaking and all that. But I think it's so important we have these real people. And uh, f just for your little joke after the cinema, um, you see this uh, naked man on this uh, peasant re-education, you know the the fun arts class, this uh, this David gesture, and he is a chief 
of that village. <laughs> so we said, so originally, so we said, can you bring 300 men? He said, yes. And what can I do for you? I said, can you do this naked, naked man, you know, standing on the table? But wear Calvin Klein brand. And he said, Calvin Klein, give it to me. I stand up. <laughs> So we really, really love him, right? Just, uh, he was so helpful. Okay, we have time for two more questions. Yes. Uh, following up on your response about using uh, amateur actors, how much uh, was the budget for the film? The producer has to answer this, but don't give the real answer, please. <laughs> I want to know too. <laughs> well, some people tell me it looks like five million. R and ten million. <laughs> no, it's around one and a half. <laughs> around one and a half million euro. No. But you know, you can decide if you believe in him or not. He's German. <laughs> Some idea I had before the, the shooting. I wanted two two styles. So if we ever use uh, Chinese music, it has to be source source music. I mean, we say source music meaning the music is composed much much before, sung by a, a singer, is recorded, is in the mass market. So it's a real recorded folk. You know, it's production. It's a source music. That would be the only Chinese music I would use. And then another type of music is a score, it's very Western score, but it's a score somehow, not Western, not Chinese, but really designed for each character. So, so we had this Berlin-based black Somalia musician called Maki, and he's just, a, he, he never been to China, and he has some, you know, Somalia, Ethiopia music background, which, which is really exciting for us to work with him because for me, I, I, I dream to work with people and the knowledge I don't know yet in order to possess knowledge, you know? So he comes with those, this great, this drum, African drum and all this stuff. So the, the score of the music is all from him. And uh, yeah, I think he provided a very different uh, idea you know, for me, for example, we have Kabli, the fisherman, fisherman, fisherman's skull. So you can recognize when he died, you know. But you you don't recognize uh, in the in the in the in the intellectual way. You do recognize in the emotional way. And when Kwok Yun in the bicycle store, we have one tune. We always play that tune in a different kind of version, you know. So that was very clear. We have to use that tune for. For he, he and her, you know, the silent moment, and then when the Chi Chang comes out, we have those kind of very crazy kind of uh, sundown, you know, like like a big wall behind her sundown, and the headmaster as well. So that's all Maki's idea. He, he he was very sensitive to that. Yeah. All right. Sadly, that is all we have time for. But please join me in thanking the team. Thanks for being here. So I'm supposed to do some uh, publicity. So um, we have a last screening on Saturday, 10 a.m. So hope your friends will come. Thank you.